Harry's Wife, Part 101.100 Danger, the Danish Stripping Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Now, if some of you thought that this was some kind of naughty removal of clothes action involving a delightful Danish person, then hang your head in shame, you disgusting degenerate. Also, if you thought perhaps it was some kind of video about somebody stuffing lots of Danish pastries into their mouth and stripping the bakery completely dry of all delicious, tasty Danish pastry products, then I suggest you need to have a word with yourself. Instead, as always, this is about narcissism and a potential danger to Harry and Harry's wife. There have, of course, been repeated calls made by commentators and disgruntled members of the public who are sick and tired of the behaviour of Prince Harry and Harry's wife, exhibiting a sense of entitlement, thinking about themselves, being selfish with regard to the treatment of both Prince Philip and the recently passed away Queen Elizabeth II, people who had a, a fill of two individuals who were seen as being out for themselves, being tactless, classless, and, in its essence, grifting at every opportunity. As I've explained, this comes naturally to Harry's wife as a consequence of her grasping narcissism, and she has polluted the behaviour of Prince Harry, and as a consequence of his vulnerabilities, his emotional thinking, and his general dim-wittedness, has led him down the path of behaving just like her. And thus, the possibility of the removal of the titles looms large over them, and this is a substantial threat to the pair of them. Why? They have nothing else to offer. He is an unintelligent individual who was born a prince. He served tours in the army. There are varying accounts of those who think, well, well done, brave young man, others calling him Bunker Harry. But beyond that, he's done nothing and has no real talent for anything. But he had a place in the hearts of many British public and the wider world as the Playboy Prince, uh, an affable, likeable individual who had suffered tragedy early on in his life and was deserving of some sympathy. Much of that sympathy, of course, has now become eroded. But people tolerated him and, in a sense, gave him a bit of a pass for his lack of actually having anything to do when it comes to Harry's wife, as was summed up earlier, she is a cable actress and a fashion blogger. Beyond that, she offers nothing. Neither writer, screenwriter, bananatarian, politician, fashion icon, although she believes herself to be all of these things. She is the Duchess of Industrial Beige. Empty and the dimwit. And the problem they have is that if they didn't have those titles, would anybody be interested in them? It's a resounding no. Nobody would look twice at them. Nobody would report on them. And the problem is, she fails to recognise the hypocrisy of her behaviours of lambasting the royal family whilst utilising the title to achieve subconsciously the prime aims. And furthermore, there is a risk that should the titles be gone, Nobody would have any interest in them. This would make it more difficult for her to assert control on the scale that she's become accustomed to. Her fuel matrix would be impacted considerably. And she would still receive fuel. It wouldn't necessarily plunge her into a fuel crisis. But it would make a major problem with regard to character trait acquisition. It would be a major problem with regard to those residual benefits. The facade would be dented and, of course, money, which is hugely important to her, and the opportunities afforded by that status would suddenly disappear. Plain old Mr and Mrs Harry's wife are not going to be of real interest to anybody. And it is a clear and present risk to them. Why? 1. Charles has always spoken about a slimmed down monarchy when he was going to become king, recognising the way that the wind was blowing with regard to public affection. 2. The Queen commanded huge respect, and that enabled people to tolerate the other members of the royal family who perhaps were less adherent to the excellent years of service that she demonstrated. That goodwill it becomes in short supply. Charles has many critics, particularly with regard to his own behaviours, and therefore he is not, as a need to assert his own control and nullify threats to control, 
going to tolerate carrying members of the royal family when he's going to be fighting his own battles for popularity. Three, whereas Prince Andrew is an outcast, he's largely kept his head down. These two keep sticking above the parapet and throwing those brickbats from across the ocean. Therefore, not only causing a problem for the monarchy as a whole, and of course, continuing to threaten the control of Charles. What better way than to nullify that threat to control than stripping them of the titles? Four, there's a groundswell of public opinion that demands this action be taken. And then finally, there is five. What has just recently happened in Denmark? We turn to the Guardian newspaper, which tells us in an article by Again, say, France Press, Denmark's Queen Margareta strips four grandchildren of royal titles. Denmark's Queen Margareta, Europe's only reigning queen and the continent's longest-serving monarch, has stripped four of her eight grandchildren their titles, the palace announced. The official reason was to allow the four children of her youngest son, Prince Joachim, to live more normal lives and follow similar moves by other royal families in Europe to slim down their monarchies, the palace said. As of January the 1st, 2023, the descendants of His Royal Highness Prince Joachim will only be able to use their titles of Count and Countess of Montpezat, their previous titles of Prince and Princess of Denmark, seeking to exist. A statement from the royal palace said on Wednesday. Prince Joachim, 53, has four children from two marriages, Nikolai, Felix, Henrik and Athena, ranging in age from 23 to 10. With her decision, Her Majesty the Queen wants to create a framework for the four grandchildren, to much a greater degree to be able to shape their own existence without being limited by the special considerations and obligations that a formal affiliation with the royal house as an institution implies, the palace said. The Queen's decision is in line with similar changes that other royal houses have carried out in recent years, in different ways, the statement added. The mother of Prince Joachim's two elder sons told Danish media she was shocked by the decision. This came out of the blue. The children feel excluded, Countess Alexandra told the Daily BT. They can't understand why their identity is being taken from them. The Queen's four other grandchildren, born to Crown Prince Frederick, 54, will retain their titles, but when they come of age, only the future King, Prince Christian, will receive an appanage, a decision taken in 2016. Shock expressed at the removal of the titles, but this shows that the Queen of Denmark, and whatever her motives might be, whether it, of course, relates to simply as it's stated, the desire to slim down the monarchy, or whether there is something behind that, well, that remains to be seen. But the fact is that this action has been taken. And of course, Prince Charles is going to have one eye on this. And also thinking, well, there are other European families that have done this. Denmark have done it just recently. So it's going to be of the moment. It's a popular thing to do. It's hardly going to be seen as shattering the mould. And therefore, it may well be giving him ideas. And of course, the two individuals that are most likely to be in his sights with regard to this would be Harry and Harry's wife. Because of course, they are now the Duke and Duchess of Overseas. Will Harry's wife have regard to what's gone on in Denmark? Well, it depends if it's brought her attention. I doubt that she would necessarily make the connection herself because the arrogance of her narson would say, well, it's happened there, but this isn't going to happen to us. We're far more important. Uh, she would look to perhaps issue threats. But of course, I've told you about the nature of the ability to issue those threats and parts pass him. And her narcissism will convince her that she is not under threat that what's happened in Denmark isn't going to happen to them, and she will just carry on and dismiss it, thus nullifying the potential threat to control it presents if it was brought to her attention, which I suspect it would be by suitable PR advisors or press officers. She doesn't see that it's applicable to her, the way that many narcissists believe those things happen to the little people, they don't happen to the likes of me, which is often, of course, the undoing, particularly of mid-range narcissists. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.